Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, our first online chapter. Uh, we're gonna go over chapter five, which is mass and energy analysis of control volumes. So in previous chapter, which was chapter four, uh, we talked about uh, mass and energy analysis of closed system. And uh, in this chapter, we will focus on basically uh, open systems, which basically it's mentioned control volumes. It's basically the same thing, okay? Uh, so, all right, so we'll talk about basically the conservation of mass for these systems as well as conservation of energy and uh, We will go over different devices such as nozzles compressors turbines and other type of devices that basically uh, Work based on this control volume energy analysis system all right, so what is conservation of mass? I think it's pretty clear. We already talked about the uh, conservation of energy. Uh, mass is also like energy. It's a conserved property. And uh, it doesn't basically, uh, it's not created, destroyed during a process, right? Uh, so uh, what was closed system? Closed system was a system that doesn't transfer mass. So uh, this is a closed system. It only transfers energy. Uh, through its boundary, right? And uh, so this is an example of closed system. This is closed, right? An open system, however, can transfer mass and energy uh, with the environment. So it has an inlet, it might have also an outlet, right? So could be something like this, mass coming in, mass leaving, right? And, uh, this is an open system, right? Uh, so uh, it's a conserved property, right? And uh, for example, you can see in this figure that uh, if you mix two kilograms of hydrogen with 16 kilograms of uh, oxygen, you will get basically 18 kilograms of uh, water. So the sum of these two masses is equal to the total amount of mass produced during this process. All right, so let's go more into details of basically deriving the equation for uh, mass transfer, for conservation of mass, okay? Uh, the first thing we're gonna focus on is basically to derive an equation for uh, mass flow rate. So what was mass flow rate? Uh, remember from previous chapter, mass flow rate was basically kilo, uh, the unit of mass flow rate where was uh, kilogram per second means mass per time right and uh, if you write it in differential format uh, uh, we had several definitions of mass flow rate uh, one of the definitions was this one mass flow rate was basically density multiplied by average velocity multiplied by cross-sectional area of your uh, basically flow right and uh, if you write this in differential format that's how you write it uh, uh, basically uh, differential change in mass flow rate is equal to the density multiplied by uh, normal velocity this is called normal velocity I will talk about it momentarily and uh, basically uh, your uh, differential cross-sectional area now if you assume that you have a uh, if you take an integral from both sides of this equation and if you assume that uh, your density stays constant uh, which is true for liquids and uh, basically your cross-sectional area also stays constant these two parameters comes out of the integral and what remains is basically integral of uh, V n dAc right uh, sorry integral of VA and Vn right so uh, what is that basically? So uh, if you have, uh, so what is normal velocity first? So the normal velocity, uh, let's assume that you have uh, a system and uh, let's assume that you have a pipe like this. And then uh, there is a table or something here and there's a pipe here and then there is a water flowing into this direction right what is the uh, so with normal we mean basically 
uh, the vector which is perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of our flow okay uh, if we are considering the pipe as our system in this case this the normal vector to the perpendicular to the cross-sectional area is this one right so that's the normal vector now if the flow is in that direction and it has enough velocity that fluid whatever that is will pass uh, on the pipe and I mean you will you may have a small very small volume of water or flow uh, or fluid coming into the pipe however and now assume the same pipe right and then you have a flow in this direction and the normal is this right so how much of fluid will go pass through this pipe almost all of it right so the angle between the normal vector uh, to the cross-sectional area and also the flow direction play a role in how much fluid will pass through that pipe right so this vn basically in these equations in all these equations represent the normal velocity right how do you find normal velocity it's basically derived based on the angle uh, between uh, if we go a couple of slides uh, uh, you can see this is the velocity this is the normal angle if you assume that this is your control volume here um, this is the pipe this is a control volume you can choose any control volume basically right anywhere it control volume it's just basically a surface or a volume that you want to investigate so if you assume that this is your control volume here then the normal vector is this the flow is that direction the angle between these two is called theta and vn is calculated by multiplying the velocity by cosine of theta okay that's how you get basically the normal velocity now let's go back to previous slide and uh, let's talk about basically uh, if we want to do the integration what do we get so why do first we do the integration so if you have a pipe look at this figure figure 5 3 so if you look at this figure uh, you see there is a pipe and there is a fluid passing through the pipe and you see all these arrows right these arrows represent the velocity magnitude okay so if you have a pipe and then you have a fluid passing through that pipe then you will have lowest um, velocity magnitude close to the pipe wall right so what you see here is that you have very small velocities close to the wall right and the highest velocity is exactly in the middle of the pipe so this is the highest magnitude of the velocity this is the lowest at the basically these are at the walls they are the lowest values right and um, so we have a basically velocity distribution within the pipe right but if you want to calculate the mass flow rate uh, using uh, this equation on the top which is m dot is equal to density average velocity cross-sectional area then uh, you need to have an average velocity calculated right so this average velocity is calculated by the this right hand right side equation on the right of your slides V average is 1 over cross-sectional area uh, 1 over cross-sectional area uh, integral of cross-sectional area velocity and then you take the integral with respect to cross-sectional area right all right so uh, the volume flow rate also is defined by this equation integral uh, of Vn dAc so basically your volume flow rate which is cubic meter per second the unit is equal to your velocity or average velocity multiplied by cross-sectional area right make sense that's the same thing right so v dot is equal to velocity multiplied by cross-sectional area therefore you can write basically your mass flow rate either way you can write your mass flow rate in terms of density average velocity multiplied by cross-sectional area or you can write it in terms of volumetric flow rate density multiplied by 
volumetric fluid. So these two are important equations. We went already over these equations in previous chapters, but anyway. So uh, now what does the conservation of mass tells you? So the conservation of mass says that basically the total mass entering the control volume minus the total mass leaving the control volume is the net change of the mass within the control volume. So pretty simple, right? Mass in minus mass out is equal to change in the control volume mass, right? Uh, so that's basically what the conservation of mass is. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, however, derivation might look a little bit complex. Uh, this is basically, this slide talks about how to derive the an integral format of the uh, mass flow rate. Uh, you can see here, um, this is the total mass within the control volume. So it's in integral format. Remember, mass is equal to density multiplied by volume, right? In integral format, this is how you write it. And uh, rate of mass basically uh, change within the control volume is the derivative of this part, right? Derivative of the left-hand side of this equation. And this is basically the time derivative of that equation, right? And uh, normal velocity, we already talked about. We are defining the components of the and conservation of mass equation uh, and I'm not going to go into the details but this is what you get basically as the integral format of conservation of mass look at this term the first term the first term is basically um, a rate of change of mass within the system that should be equal to what to net mass flow rate right so rate of change of mass within the control volume is the net mass basically transfer within the system means mass in minus mass out and that net mass flow rate can be used can be basically uh, represented by that equation and this is basically how you get the final equation right anyway uh, what we will use mostly is basically simple uh, conservation of mass equation and even more simpler equation which basically we consider a steady state flow in a steady state flow basically we don't have any accumulation of mass within the control volume therefore what happens to this term if there is no mass change within the control volume with time then this term is zero right so total mass sigma m dot in is going to be equal to sigma m dot out and that's for steady flow systems, right? Okay, so here is what that is. Uh, we just talked about it, right? And uh, sigma mass in is equal to sigma mass out. M dot one is equal to M dot two. And uh, M dot definition is basically density volume cross sectional area at the entrance. Uh, density velocity cross-sectional area uh, at the exit and uh, these two should be equal to each other now if you have a, a liquid which is not compressible incompressible fluid then the density does not really change and velocity multiplied by cross-sectional area is equal to velocity multiplied by uh, cross-sectional area on the other hand the volumetric flow rate at the entrance is equal to volumetric flow rate at the exit so that's also shown here basically in this slide right that's for incompressible flow because density is cancelled out we don't have such a thing as the conservation of volume this please make sure you understand that we do have conservation of mass although it looks like it's a conservation of volume but it's not because density is cancelled out from each basically side of the equation all right so uh in the next video uh, i'm gonna talk about the uh, we will do an example all right